continue the series on gifts in the church and uh, we have um, discussed the fact that there are in fact three different categories of uh, gifts given to the church. There are the ministry gifts which are um, for the um, those who are called to full-time ministry in preaching and teaching the Word of God. And there are five main ministry gifts. Uh, that is apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. There are other ministry gifts listed in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but the five main ones are listed for us in Ephesians chapter 4. We've gone through that particular series. Then we had a look at the, uh, another category of gifts, which are the functional gifts, and those gifts are given to each individual member of the body of Christ so that they can function within the body of Christ. Uh, we haven't dealt with that particular um, grouping of giftings up to now, but we've just identified that that uh, is a grouping of giftings that are given to the church. And then the, the third grouping of giftings that we looked at in Scripture is the spiritual gifts. And uh, it's the spiritual gifts that we are dealing with in this series of teachings. And the spiritual gifts are listed for us in the book of Corinthians, chapter 12. Um, there are nine spiritual gifts listed, and each one of them is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit um, as He makes Himself manifest in these nine different ways. In fact, they, we said that there are seven different ways that He manifests Himself through these gifts, and that equates to the fact that there are, in fact, seven spirits of God as uh, revealed in the book of Revelation. And those gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, um, gifts of healings, miracles, <clears throat> um, faith, and uh, prophecy, diverse kind of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Those are the nine gifts of the Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12. And we said that the three gifts that are, are similar, which is prophecy, diverse kind of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues, you, we can uh, link those three gifts as under one heading, as uh, the gift of proclaiming the word of the Lord by the, uh, divine inspiration. And that's why we said that we can um, really equate the gifts of the Spirit to seven gifts, although there in fact are nine in this dispensation that we live in now. And then in the previous teaching, we had a look at um, who can operate in spiritual gifts. And we saw that um, the gateway to operating in the spiritual gifts uh, is that one a, a believer has to first be baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We said that that, that is the first step, um, that a believer who has not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, does not have access to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For it is the same Holy Spirit that displays His power through, uh, His supernatural power through the gift of other tongues, who displays his supernatural power through the various gifts that he manifests in the church. And then we said that in order to be able to operate in the gifts, one has to operate in the gifts by faith. Um, for we receive nothing from the Lord except by faith, and we certainly cannot operate in the things of God except by faith, and that would include the spiritual gifts. And then we also saw that we need to have... Um, the right motives for seeking spiritual gifts because the Bible does teach us to desire spiritual gifts but uh, the motiv motivation behind desiring spiritual gifts must always be for the edification of the church and not for um, the individual to be uh, glorified in, in, in the church but rather that the church may be edified and so the right motivation has to be displayed and then we had a look briefly at uh, the, the mechanism that the Lord mechanisms that the Lord uses to impart spiritual gifts. And we saw that the main method that the Lord uses to impart spiritual gifts to His saints is through the method of laying on of hands. And we saw that it is always the Holy Spirit who decides which spiritual gift will be given to an individual. So it's no one can say, well, I'm going to give you the gift of prophecy. Come to me, lay hands on you, and you'll receive the gift of prophecy. That can't happen. Yeah, we can impart spiritual gifts through the laying on of hands, but it is always the Holy Spirit who decides which gift is going to be given. 
And um, we also said that only an individual who has that particular gift can impart that gift to someone else. Um, and so it's not a case of, I have the gift of prophecy, but if I lay hands on you, you'll receive the gifts of healings. That, that, that won't work. Um, now, that doesn't mean that the individual can't then receive gifts of healing because no one can lay hands on him who has the particular gift. Because we said that the Holy Spirit also drops those giftings into the individual directly, um, just as an individual can be filled with the Holy Spirit directly as well. It uh, doesn't have to be filled with the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. And so spiritual gifts do not have to be imparted through the laying on of hands, but it is the main method. Just like being filled with the Holy Spirit, it is the main method that the Lord uses for individuals to be filled with the Holy Spirit is through the laying on of hands. But it's not the only way God does it. It's just that it's easier for believers to receive from the Lord um, through the laying on of hands because there is that physical contact that takes place and it, it acts as a trigger for the saint to be able to release their faith so that they can receive from the Lord. And so that kind of brings us up to speed with where we are today. Today we want to look at uh, the category of, or the section of how do we operate in spiritual gifts. Um, and we want to look at various aspects of it. We won't finish the teaching on this subject today. We must probably cover it over two teachings. But uh, let's just see how far we do get with this particular aspect of spiritual gifts. So the first thing we want to just identify with regards to spiritual gifts, we need to understand this concept, is that there are differing levels of anointing. So it is the same God, um, but God displays His power at different levels. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, we can have a look um, to get a, a kind of a, a, an example. Um, the Apostle Peter, in the early stages of the church in Jerusalem, when she was just starting out, uh, the apostles and obviously a lot of members in the church as well, um, were uh, anointed by God to operate in a great degree of power. There was just a, a tremendous amount of power operating through the early church at that time. If you, and in fact, in the book of Acts, that is the only time recorded where the scripture says that all were healed. Um, in our Lord's ministry, there were instances where all were healed. But in other parts of, of the book of Acts, when we see um, demonstrations of the Spirit of God taking place and the power of God, we don't see the, the, the term used, all were healed again. But it, in this particular time in the church in Jerusalem, because she was so anointed, and there were various reasons for that, uh, the scripture tells us that all were healed whenever they, when, when they brought the people um, into the streets and they laid them out and the apostles would then pray for them, all were healed. But um, one of the in incidents we can pick up on is in Acts chapter 5 verse 15. And that is the fact that the apostle Peter was so anointed of the Holy Spirit in the ministry gifts of healings that when he walked past individuals, even his shadow touching the individuals caused them to be healed. And so he was just walking past and they would be healed as he walked past. Now, we don't see that in our Lord's ministry. What we saw in our Lord's ministry is that everybody who, who was able to touch his garment was, was healed. And so people were you know, um, thronging him to touch his garment at times, not all the time. But there are incidents recorded, us, recorded for us in the Gospels where people sought to touch uh, the hem of his garment so that they, and the power of God would then flow and they would be healed. Uh, but we don't see any mention of our Lord's shadow healing people. But here in the book of Acts we do. Remember our Lord did say, um, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. And uh, so, you know, it's just a greater degree of anointing that was made manifest at that time through Peter's ministry. Now, um, that is, now we compare that to um, somebody laying hands on another individual, uh, uh, let's talk about in a church environment, somebody laying hands on another individual because they got flu and praying and asking the Lord to heal them of their flu. Well, and, they, and the Lord heals that individual. 
Um, it's the same healing power that is being made manifest. So when the one saint lays hands on another saint in a church environment so that they may be healed of flu, it's still the same healing power of God that is imparted to the individual which heals him of flu. But in Peter's case, when he was walking uh, down the, the road and his shadow was healing people, and of, the Bible doesn't mention which type of sickness was being healed, it just mentions that all were healed. So blindness, uh, being paralyzed, all sorts of sicknesses were being healed. As Peter walked past, just his shadow touching them. Now that's just, it's exactly the same healing power of God being made manifest just in a greater degree, a greater level of anointing, a greater level of power, um, so to speak. So if you want to go look at it in a, in a natural analogy, you can, we can say that um, when an individual prays for another individual in faith for them to be healed, there's a little battery uh, power, double uh, A size, whatever, being used to impart the healing power of God. But in Peter's case, then you had these huge, big, this flow of, of power just uh, pouring out of Peter. And so it, it, I trust you understand the difference that it's always the same power of God. It's just distributed at different levels. And that's something we need to understand when it comes to dealing with operating in the gifts of the Spirit. Because not all gifts are made manifest with the same degree of anointing, same degree of power. Um, and that's how we can kind of just differentiate between um, the, the different levels of power. So it's, again, it's the same healing power of God, but God just uh, imparts a greater um, amount of power through certain individuals than at other times through other individuals um, and so that also brings me to another point that we have to also differentiate between the gifts of the Spirit and walking by faith and operating by faith um, and so let's just have a look at a passage of Scripture and that will then help us to understand that concept which is in Mark chapter 16 beginning at verse 17 um, our Lord speaking and he says and these signs will follow those who believe. Now, this is talking about believers. And our Lord is saying these signs will follow all believers. This is not for a, a unique uh, grouping of believers. These signs will follow all who believe. So you, any believer who has exercises their faith, they can expect these signs to follow uh, their walk. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They lay, will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. And so this particular um, aspect that our Lord is speaking about is that this is available to every saint of God who exercises their faith to walk in it. And so... For every believer, they have the ability, by faith, to cast out demons. They have the ability, by faith, to speak with new tongues. They have the ability, by faith, to lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Now, that is available to every single saint, and they can exercise their faith because Jesus has said this, these signs will follow those who believe. And so, as a believer, I can say, all right, Lord, I'm going to believe your word in this, and I'm going to exercise my faith, and I expect this to happen when I do so. And that's exactly what will happen. I will speak with tongues because obviously when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I do. I speak with other tongues. And um, if I come in, into contact with somebody who is demon-possessed in the name of Jesus, I can cast that demon out and that demon will come out. And in the name of Jesus, if, if my brother or sister is ill, I can lay hands on that person or even somebody in the world that is. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Christian. For he said they'll lay their hands on the sick. Now the sick are in both camps, in the, in, the, in the church and outside of the church. And our Lord has said, if you believe, you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So that is available to every single saint of God. If they appropriate that by faith. And the, the classic one is speaking with other tongues. We said we can only be filled with the Holy Spirit by faith. And as we are, we then speak out in other tongues by faith, and that's exactly what happens. 
So that is available to every saint. But not every saint can do the following. Um, well, let, before I, I talk about what not every saint can do the following, let, a passage of scripture that kind of just highlights that which is available to every saint is in James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Scripture says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And so here we have a member of the congregation who has fallen ill. And he calls for the elders of the church to come and lay hands on him and pray for him. Now they also anoint him with oil, but it is the prayer of faith that heals the sick. And so this is they, all we see is that these elders are practicing what our Lord Jesus Christ said would happen. He said those who believe will lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. And so that is, as I say, available to every single member of the body of Christ. Um, if they, they can appropriate that and walk in that by faith. And that is uh, um, God's power then being made manifest through faith. Simple, simple faith. That is, God, you said it. I'm believing it. So I'm laying hands on this individual now. They have flu. I'm, I'm praying for them in Jesus' name. And I, I thank you, Lord, that they, they'll be healed. I command the sickness to leave this body in the name of Jesus. And I'm doing that by faith. And now what happens is God's healing power is imparted to that physical body that I'm praying for, and they're healed. And so it's God's healing power that is being made manifest through the individual saint praying for another saint. Um, and so I trust that you understand that is operating by faith, and all believers can do that. But, as I was saying, not all believers can do this. What am I talking about? Well, let's go to the scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. The scripture says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And so not all believers can do this. All believers can do what we saw in the book of James. All believers can go to another believer who is ill and they can by faith lay hands on that believer and pray for them that they may be healed and God will heal them. God's healing power will be um, uh, transferred into their bodies and drive out the sickness from their bodies. But, as I said, not all believers can do what Philip did. Because Philip was anointed by the Holy Spirit with the spiritual gift Call the gifts of healings and also the work of miracles. Um, but let's just stay with the gifts of healings because we're doing the comparative between a believer who by faith believes what our Lord said to us in Mark 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. That all believers can do. But not all believers can do what Philip did because Philip was anointed by the Holy Spirit with the spiritual gift called gifts of healings. Now when Philip operated in that gift, multitudes were healed. Many paralyzed and lame were healed. So because I'm a believer and uh, I, I walk by faith, I can't take Mark 16 where our Lord said, These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. I can't now go into a, a, a city and place a full page ad and say bring to um, this stadium everybody who's paralyzed and everybody who's lame and I will lay hands on them and they will all be healed. That I can't do because I don't have Philip's gift. I can operate by faith in praying for individuals but I'm not going to experience seeing multitudes healed my simple gift of faith. 
because that's not what this um, simple gift of faith is intended for because I don't have that level of anointing upon me so that I can go lay hands on multitudes who are uh, lame and paralyzed and, and, and get them healed. That's a different level of anointing. It's the same healing power because remember we said when I pray for somebody who's got flu in obedience to Mark 16, well, it's God's healing power that flows from my hands into that uh, sick body and that sick body gets healed. But that's a one-on-one -on -one situation and that's just my faith. And it's only my faith. It's because I believe it's going to happen and the individual believes that they will receive from me that it does happen. But in Philip's case, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And so the power of God was, it's, it's tangible in those instances. And it is so tangible that people who, who know nothing about the power of God, because here Philip was uh, ministering to the unsaved, um, and they knew nothing about the power of God, but they could uh, experience the tangible power of God flowing into their bodies, and that anointing was healing them. Um, and it, it doesn't say that their faith was causing them to be healed, but it says that they were healed. And so it was the anointing that was upon uh, Philip's ministry that was the spiritual gift of gifts of healings being displayed through Philip and so that is in, a, in that instance multitudes will be healed and miraculous healings taking place because I mean as we saw with Philip uh, paralyzed and lame were healed so people were getting up off of um, their, their beds and that they who were paralyzed they couldn't walk and they were getting up and walking so it's, it's a different uh, degree of power being displayed through the spiritual gifts. And so we need to understand there is the difference. Um, people sometimes get it confused. They think, well, you know, I can do what Philip did. You can't because you don't have the gift that Philip had. And so that anointing, that level of anointing, God has not made available to you. And so you can't walk in it. But what God has made available to you is by faith you can lay hands on an individual and believe that God will heal them and God will heal them and the Bible says and the sick will recover so it's not always a case that there's an instant recovery but it's certainly a recovery that takes place quite often over a period of time but we do need to understand the difference between operate in, operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and walking by faith because walking by faith also produces results but it doesn't produce results on the scale that walking in the gifts of the Spirit produces um, again, compare a little battery with you know a whole electrical grid pouring out uh, electrical power, and that's the difference kind of between the two. The way we can kind of understand the difference uh, between the two, and so we need to understand that when we deal with spiritual gifts, because as I say, spiritual gifts operate at a different level to operating in faith. Um, both need to operate by faith, obviously, but the one has been given a, a dispensation by God, has been given an anointing by God, uh, an ability by God to operate in a greater um, level of power than the one who is operating simply by faith. Um, and I trust you understand the difference between the two. And so we're looking at the, the, the topic of how do we operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And so we do need to recognize the difference between the, the, the degree of anointing given to the gifts of the Spirit and uh, operating simply, simply by faith. And even within the um, anointing that is operating within the gifts of the Spirit, there are greater and lesser degrees of anointing as well. And uh, we'll, we'll touch on that as we get into this teaching for the, today. Now, one of the things we do need to to know in order to operate in the gifts of the Spirit is we need to know what gift we have received by the Spirit because all of the gifts operate by faith. We saw that in the previous teaching. And so we cannot operate in a, a, a spiritual gift unless we can exercise our faith to operate in that gift. Now we can only exercise our faith to operate in a gift that we know we have received from the Lord. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to exercise my faith to operate in that gift. In the scripture we can look at, there's a couple. The first one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. 
The scripture says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. And so the spiritual gift is given to the individual. And it's important for the individual to know which gift they have received from the Holy Spirit so that they can exercise their faith to operate in that gift. And so the spiritual gifts are given. It is the Holy Spirit who makes himself then manifest through the individual as he wills, when he wills. But nevertheless, that gift then resides on the inside of that individual when the Holy Spirit imparts that gift to the individual. And so it's very important for us as believers to know which spiritual gift we have in fact received from the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we're never going to exercise our faith in operating in that particular gift. Um, another scripture that confirms this truth for us is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. The Apostle Paul advising uh, Timothy how to operate in his gift, and he says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. And so, in this instance, Timothy was told by the Holy Spirit through prophecy, Timothy, this gift you are now receiving from the Holy Spirit. So Timothy knew which gift he had received from the Holy Spirit. And because Timothy knew he had received that gift, he, Timothy could now exercise his faith to operate in that gift. Because clearly the Holy Spirit had, had said to him, I'm imparting this gift to you. Uh, and that was made known to Timothy through the word of prophecy. And so, as I say, we would not be able to exercise our faith to operate in the gifts of the Spirit if we don't even know which gifts we've received. So one of the criteria we do need in order to, uh, to fulfill, in order to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, is we do need to know what gift we've received uh, so that we can exercise our faith to operate in that gift. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've covered that in, in, in a, a depth. The next point we need to know is that when we do receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, whichever one it is, I'm, I'm talking about spiritual gift, I'm not talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking other times. I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit does impart one of His nine spiritual gifts to us. At the same time, the Holy Spirit imparts the faith that we need to operate in in that gift and so there's, there's a, a subtle difference because we need faith to exercise the gift that we have but once we have that gift we have also been what has been imparted to us at the same time is the, the, the level of faith that we need to operate in our spiritual gift and that faith that we need to operate in our spiritual gift is different to our daily living faith. Uh, I do a whole teaching on the difference between daily living faith and, and uh, ministry gift faith. But let me just kind of highlight the point here. Um, our daily living faith is Mark 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. So that's my daily living faith. That's the faith that I receive. All believers receive that same measure of faith when they're born again. For the Bible says, by grace you are saved by faith. Uh, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So God imparts uh, his faith to us, the measure of faith. Um, we receive from the Lord when we're born again. And that's the faith that we have to live by, for the just shall live by faith. And so all believers receive exactly the same amount of faith. Now that faith we can grow in, but that faith is only applied in our daily lifestyle. So to walk, to live as believers, that is what that faith is used for. That faith cannot be utilized in the gifts of the Spirit because the, when I receive a gift of the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit imparts to me the faith that I need to operate that particular gift at the same time. Um, the simplest way for us to maybe kind of understand this, because one of the gifts of the Spirit is called the gift of faith, which in actual fact is the gift of spirit, uh, of special faith. All right. Now, the gift of special faith is, is completely... It's the same faith, again, we, as I said right at the outset of this teaching. Um, the power of God is the same. 
it just manifests itself in different levels of anointing. So there's a greater degree of power displayed in, at some times than at other times. Faith is also exactly the same, but there are also different levels of faith. And so the, the gift of faith, the spiritual gift of special faith, when that uh, gift is made manifest, that individual is able to use that faith to raise the dead. And, that, and let's go back to, and we did put this example across, when Peter uh, went uh, into the temple. And there was the guy lying at the gate, gate beautiful. And Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand, stand up and walk. And he lifted him up and he was healed instantly. Now that was the gift of special faith being made manifest through Peter at that instant. Prior to that, that, that gift wasn't being made manifest through Peter. Peter could walk and was walking in his daily living faith because he was living his, that he was living his Christian walk by that faith. But that faith was not strong enough for Peter to look at the guy and say, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Because had that faith been strong enough, Peter would have done it weeks before the time. Because Peter passed this guy every single day, maybe two, three times a day, um, four weeks at a time, and never had Peter uh, healed the individual. So it wasn't that Peter now felt compassion, whereas before Peter, it was not, there was no compassion there. Now it was purely the gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift of faith, came upon Peter at that instant, and the Holy Spirit made himself manifest through that gift and in, in Peter at that time. So that's what the gift of faith does. It, it is able to do that. It is able to raise people from the dead. But our daily living faith doesn't ra can't raise people from the dead because Mark 16 is our daily living faith. And nowhere does the Lord say, these signs shall follow their belief, that believe they will raise the dead. Uh, he doesn't say that. He said, they will heal the sick and cast out demons. That individual believers can do. But going to raise somebody from the dead, that requires now the gift of faith. So it's the same level of, it's the same faith, but it's at different levels. And uh, we need to understand that because that is, as I say, when somebody has received the gift of faith, they operate at a level of faith that is far greater uh, than their normal daily living faith. And it, it only happens on instances when the Holy Spirit makes himself manifest through the individual. It's not a case that person walks around all day long um, raising people from... Um, the, the deathbed and raising uh, paralyzed people in healing. You, whoever you come across is blind, you just heal them. And you, whoever's deaf, you just heal them. It doesn't work like that. It's only as the Holy Spirit wills that that gift is then made manifest through the person. Now, Peter had the gift on the inside of him. It was resident. And Peter was open to the Holy Spirit to be used by him when the Holy Spirit moved upon him. But Peter couldn't make the decision. And Peter couldn't say, all right, I'm going to go heal this person now. It wasn't Peter's call. It was the Holy Spirit's call to say, All right, Peter, I want to now use you. And so Peter was obedient and allowed the Holy Spirit to use him as a vessel in that instance. And so that's kind of the... the, the it gives you a, an indication that when it comes to the gift of the Spirit that we receive from the Lord, it is not our daily living faith that causes that gift to be made manifest. It is the, the, the faith imparted to us by the Holy Spirit to cause His gift to be made manifest through us. And there is a difference because if it was our own individual faith, well then we don't need the Holy Spirit because we can just go do it ourselves at all times. I mean, depending on where, where my faith level is at, I can go heal people as I see fit. Um, I, I don't need to rely on the Holy Spirit and His gift because my faith is strong enough to go do it. I don't need, need His gift. I don't need His faith to operate. But that's not how it works. Um, for the gifts of the Spirit to be made manifest through the individual, we need the Holy Spirit's faith to operate in the gift. It's not our daily living faith that causes us to operate in that gift. Now, I, I, I did say that we need to know what gift we've received so that we can believe and have faith to operate in that gift.
So how does that work then? Well, it works on this wise, that the Holy Spirit says, Mike, you received the gift of prophecy. So I know I have the gift of prophecy. And so I believe that the Holy Spirit will use me to prophesy when He moves upon me to do that. And so I'm not in any way hindering the Holy Spirit from using me with the gift of prophecy. But it doesn't mean now Mike can go around and prophesy to everyone. I can't do that. All that's happened is my faith is has uh, um, made the environment possible for the Holy Spirit to, to manifest Himself through me so that I can then prophesy when He moves upon me to prophesy. Now when He moves upon me to prophesy, His faith for that prophetic gift will also be made manifest at the same time. It's not going to be my faith. It'll be His faith. But my faith has always um, made myself available to the Holy Spirit for the gift of prophecy to be made manifest through me as He wills. Because I'm, I, I, know, I know I've received that gift, and so I have faith that that gift will be made manifest through me as and when the Holy Spirit wills to do that. But when He wills to do that, and I then step out in prophecy, it's His faith that takes over for that gift and then manifests that gift through me. Um, it can be a bit confusing to understand the concept, but you, you just kind of have to meditate upon it and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you the, you the truth. And the scripture we can pick up on is in Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 3. The Apostle Paul writing, he says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Now, when he, when Paul says that we need to prophesy in proportion to our faith. He's not saying prophesy in proportion to your daily living faith. He's talking about prophesying in proportion to the gift of faith that we have received for our gift of prophecy. For he says here, um, not to think of ourselves more highly than he ought to think in verse 3, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And then he goes on to talk about prophecy. And so when God gives us our gift, he gives us the measure of faith that we need to operate in that gift. And it's when we operate in that measure of faith that it's effort, effortless. It's not something that we have to strive at. It's not something that we will, you know, well, I really have to now exercise faith in order to raise this person from the dead. Not at all. When the gift of faith is made manifest, it's the simplest thing in the world to raise somebody from the dead because it's not our faith, it's now the faith of the Holy Spirit. And also, so that's just now the gift of faith. But every gift of the Holy Spirit, when we operate in that gift, it's not our faith that we are using to operate in the gift. It is the Holy Spirit's faith that is being made manifest through us. And we just effortlessly operate in the gift that He has imparted to us because it's His faith. We've been given that measure of faith. The, the Apostle Peter says pretty much the same thing as Paul, just using different terminology. Let's have a look at what Peter says. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 and 11. The scripture says, as each one has received a gift, so he's talking about, and here it, it, both Paul and Peter are talking about functional gifts. But within the functional gifts, the spiritual gifts are also listed, um, and also the same principle applies. So whereas the principle, they're talking pr primarily about the functional gifts, uh, the principle is also applicable to our operating in spiritual gifts. And so Peter says, as each one has received a gift, minister, to it, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom to belong the glory and the dominion 
forever and ever. And so, um, God supply, Peter says, God supplies the ability for us to operate in our gift that we've received from our Lord. Paul says, God supplies the, the, the measure of faith that we need to operate in our gift. So they're saying the same thing because the ability that God imparts to us is that His grace, it's, it's the faith that we need to operate in that gift. And so it's, it's God's faith that is imparted to us. Now, when God's faith is imparted to us for that particular gift, again, it's at different levels. So let's look at the gift of prophecy, for example. So you get Mike, who has been who has received the gift of prophecy from the Lord. And then you get, and I'm going to do the comparative now, with Agabus. Agabus was a prophet uh, in the New Testament, because we'll have a look at his example. Agabus, as a prophet, also received the gift of prophecy from the Holy Spirit. So both Mike and Agabus have received the gift of prophecy. When we receive the gift of prophecy from the Holy Spirit, both of us at that time also received the gift of faith that we need to operate in our gift of prophecy. But what happens is God imparts a greater degree of faith to Agabus who is a prophet to operate in the gift of prophecy than what he imparts to Mike to operate in the gift of prophecy. So how do we know that? Well, the way that the gift of prophecy operates is that some people are more anointed or less anointed to operate in the gift of prophecy. So let's stay with Mike for argument's sake. So Mike, now when he receives the gift of prophecy and the Holy Spirit, so now he, I, I know I've received the gift of prophecy and I have faith. I, I can exercise my daily living faith. Lord, I know you've given me the gift of prophecy. And so I'm available to you when you want to use me to prophesy to your church so that she may be edified. And I'm just letting you know that I'm not going to hinder you. There's no doubt in my mind, no, and I, I have full faith in my heart that you've given me this gift, and so I'm available to you to be used of you whenever you choose to use me in that manner. And so now I'm in a church meeting, and the unction of the Holy Spirit comes upon me, and the Holy Spirit says, Mike, I want you now to prophesy. I now can step out and prophesy. When I do, it's now the the faith of the Holy Spirit that takes over pertaining to that gift which is made manifest through me and I can now freely prophesy the word of the Lord. But I've received from the Lord the simple gift of prophecy. So when I speak forth a prophetic word by the unction of the Holy Spirit, I will uh, prophesy in this manner. 1 Corinthians 14.3 The scripture says, But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. And so the prophetic word that will come out from my mouth through the Holy Spirit speaking through me is I will say, thus says the Lord. Um, Jesus has died for you. He loves you. Um, he cares for you. Simple, uh, simple words of edification, exhortation and comfort to men will proceed out of my mouth through the gift of prophecy. And that will flow through me effortlessly. It won't be something that I have to strive for. Because I have that gift in me. I have the faith to operate in that gift in me. I've been given, Peter says, the ability. And when I operate in my gift, I must do it in the ability which God provides. And so He's provided that ability for me. And so I don't need to strive to do it. It just flows out through me. Um, and that's it. And then I've, I've ministered that gift to the body of Christ. And the unction goes away. The you know, Holy Spirit says, well done, Mike. You know, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm going to use you again. That's Mike operating in the gift of prophecy. But now we've got Agabus over on this side. And he's also received the gift of prophecy from the Holy Spirit. Same gift. Same Holy Spirit. But now Agabus is a prophet. So he stands in the ministry gift of prophet. Mike is just a layman. And so Mike received uh, that gift as a layman, not a, Mike's not called as a prophet to stand in the ministry gift of prophet. Agabus is. Now the Holy Spirit moves upon Agabus to prophesy. 
And so Agabus is exactly in the same boat as Mike is up until that point, because Agabus also knows he's got the gift of prophecy. Agabus also is able to exercise his daily living faith, saying to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm available to you whenever you want to use me in the gift of prophecy. I know, excuse me, that you've given me that gift of prophecy, and I'm ready to be used of you when you see fit. So Agabus is in the same church gathering. Mike's now just spoken out his prophetic word that the Holy Spirit gave him. Agabus senses the Spirit of God coming upon him, and the Holy Spirit says to Agabus, I want you to get, get up and prophesy. Agabus now also begins to prophesy to the congregation. But there's a difference, because now Agabus is operating at a different level of anointing. There is a greater degree of power, a greater degree of faith, a greater ability to prophesy being made through Agabus than was manifested through Mike. So when Agabus gets up and prophesies, this is what he does. Acts chapter 11 verse 27 and 28. And in these days prophets came from prophets, the ministry gift of prophet, came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. And so Agabus and Mike both prophesied the word of the Lord. But there's a huge difference with the, the, the revelation, the depth of revelation that came through the two different prophetic, same Holy Spirit speaking, two different saints, obviously, but the same gift, both speaking, uh, using the gift of prophecy, both being used by the Holy Spirit, but the one is prophesying with a much greater degree of anointing, and, and, and there's a far deeper amount of revelation that is imparted to the body of Christ through Agabus' prophecy. And he prophesies about a drought that's going to affect the whole world. Mike just prophesied, the Lord loves you guys, and he really loves, he wants to take care of you, you know. And so, can you see the difference between the two? And so that's kind of explaining. So, we have almost like the three stages. We have our daily living faith. And with my daily living faith, there's certain things that I can do. I can lay hands on the sick and in faith believe that they will be, be healed. And that's talking about a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's not talking about me going into a hospital and laying hands on everybody and believing everybody's going to get healed. That's not going to happen because I don't have that faith. But I can, I can believe for my brother and sister in Christ who's, who's in church and they said, you know, I really, I've got flu at the moment, I really would like somebody to pray for me. Would you agree with me? And I'll lay hands on them and agree. And by faith, trust that the Lord will heal them and that's exactly what will happen. So that's the one level. That's our daily living faith. Then we come over into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we come over into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's a different ball game entirely because now the faith that is utilized in the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is no longer my daily living faith. It's the faith that is imparted to me by the Holy Spirit for my, the, the spiritual gift that is given to me. But even within that category of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are differing levels of anointing that go with that gift. And I've, we've just discussed Mike's prophecy with Agabus's prophecy. Two different levels of anointing. Um, same gift, same Holy Spirit, but different levels of anointing. And so Mike, if Mike tried to do what Agabus did, and prophesy that there's going to be a drought throughout the world. Mike's going to get it completely messed up because Mike doesn't have that degree of anointing upon him. He doesn't have that level of faith given to him by the Holy Spirit to walk in that level of prophecy. And so we need to be, that's why Paul says you guys need to be think soberly along this issue. Because what happens very often in the body of Christ is that one member will see another member doing something and they think, well, you know, I'm also a, a child of God. I can do that. And they can't because they don't have that gift. They don't have that level of anointing. And so we have to recognize which gifts we have received. First of all, we have to recognize the difference between spiritual gifts and normal walking as believers, daily living faith. There's a big difference there. Same faith, different levels of anointing. And also, I can't with my daily living faith begin to prophesy because 
nowhere in the scripture does the scripture tell us I can do that. I can cast down demons with my daily living faith, and I can pray for the sick with my daily living faith. But I cannot prophesy with my daily living faith. That's not the Bible. So in order for me to begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, I have to receive the gift of the Spirit. I have to know what gift I've received. And once I do, I can now exercise my daily living faith to be ready to be used of the Lord in, you, in operating in that. But now, once I've received my gift of, of the Holy Spirit, I need to just recognize what level I'm at. You know, the Holy Spirit's imparted. I'm comfortable to prophesy, God loves you because he, he wants to care for you. He sent his son to die for you. I'm very comfortable to prophesy that because that's my, and I'm using just an, an example, you understand that? Um, and so the one who's received that, that's, that's where he operates. For him to see a, a prophet like Agabus get up and prophesy, and think, well, I've got the gift of prophecy, so I can do that as well. And I can start prophesying about worldwide droughts. Well, now you can't. Because if I try to do that, I do, I'm now stepping outside of the, the gift that the Holy Spirit's given me, and I'm now opening myself up to other things. And you don't want to open yourself up to other things. So I'd rather stay within what the Holy Spirit has given to us. And that's why Paul said, guys, you need to think soberly along this line. You must operate within the level of gifting the Lord's given you and the level of faith he's given you with within your gifting that you've received because different giftings um, now even Agabus as a prophet he's not always going to stand up every Sunday and prophesy droughts all over the world not going to happen it's going to happen from time to time um, most of the time he'll also prophesy the Lord loves you guys and he wants to care for you um, but from time to time, that greater degree of anointing will be made manifest through that uh, through the prophet who's got the gift of prophecy. So I hope you understand that the, the, the difference, um, because we're lear learning how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And in order for us to learn how to operate, we need to learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit so that we will operate in our gifts as we should. And as I said, once you recognize what gift you've received, and also the level of faith you've received for that gift. It is the easiest thing in the world for you to operate in that gift. Because again, you don't operate the gift. The Holy Spirit operates it through you. And so we just have to be um, vessels that cooperate with Him. And when we do, it's the easiest thing. Uh, if you have the, received the gift of faith, to go up to a, a, a crippled person and just get them healed instantly. Why, you do, why is that? Because it's not you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit. And you can't do it at all, all the time. So all of the gifts cannot operate all the time. It doesn't work like the Holy Spirit decides when He wants to make Himself manifest. We just have to be open to Him and ready and available when He wants to use us. And then when He does use us, as I say, it's, it, there's no effort involved because it's the Holy Spirit who just takes over and uses us and so that brings us to the next point um, and that is that we need to be good stewards and ministers of the gift that the Holy Spirit has given to us because we can neglect our gifts you know, the admonishment given to, to Timothy by Paul do, do not neglect the gift that is within you and so we saw uh, let's just go back to um, did I pick it up in Peter? I'll come back now quickly. Yeah, in Peter, 1 Peter 4.10, Peter says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so we must be good stewards of the ministry gifts that the Lord, the Holy Spirit has given to us. Um, and so spiritual gifts are not given to the individual to bless the individual. They are given to the church to bless the church. And so in fact the spiritual gift that is given is not given to the individual, it's actually given to the church. And the individual is to be used by the, the Holy Spirit to bless the church. And so the Holy Spirit never gives us His giftings so that we can be blessed. He always gives us His giftings so that we can bless others. That's the purpose of the spiritual gift. It's never given to the individual for the individual. It's always given to the individual to bless 
the body of Christ, to edify the body of Christ. And so from that point of view, we have to be good stewards of the gift that is given to us because that's the reason the Holy Spirit gave it to us so that we could use it for the edification of the body of Christ. Otherwise, there's no point in, in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so <clears throat> when we do receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, whichever one we do receive from the Lord, um, we need to be good custodians of that gift. And we need to be uh, good ministers of that gift. And uh, the, we've looked at two scriptures already. We'll just uh, re-emphasize it. 1, Peter, 1 Timothy 4.14. Um, Paul, he says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on the hands of the eldership. And then we've read Peter, he says, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so we need to recognize that all we are when we receive a gift from the Holy Spirit is we are stewards of that gift. That's all. It's not a gift that is given to us to bless us. It is gift, a gift that is given to us to bless the body of Christ. And we are meant to be good stewards of that gift and minister that gift to the body of Christ. Um, so we can neglect our gift, as, as uh, Paul alluded to when he spoke to Timothy, he said, do not ne neglect the gift that is in you. So how do we neglect the gift that is within us? Well, one of the ways, the, the, the direct way we neglect the gift is we just choose not to use it. Or we use it less than opportunity allows. And so let's go back to the gift of prophecy, just as an example. Uh, you're in a church meeting and the Holy Spirit now moves upon you, says, Michael, I want you to speak, of, uh, bring a prophetic word. And you say, no, well, I'm, I don't really feel like I'd like to speak out today. Uh, use somebody else. Well, the Holy Spirit's not going to force you. He's going to use somebody else. Um, but let it be known to you that the Holy Spirit's not going to come knocking on your door too often if you're going to say, oh, you know, Lord, use somebody else. I don't want to be used right now. Um, that's neglecting the gift that is within you. And so if we choose not to use the gift or we use it less than opportunity allows, less than when the Holy Spirit moves upon us. So again, we can't choose. We can't say, Lord, I'm going to now prophesy. Uh, today. So watch me, I'll prophesy. We're not going to say I'll watch you, but it's not going to be me. Um, so you, we can't do it that way. We have to be obedient servants. And so when he moves upon us, then we step out in our gift and we operate in that gift. Um, but when he moves upon us, then we must. So we can choose not to operate in the gift. And so in that manner, we will then neglect the gift that is within us. But there is another way to um, neglect the gift that is within us. And that is we can lessen the degree of anointing that is upon our lives. Because, okay, we've dealt with electricity as an example, but now let's deal with um, a water pipe as an example. Because the Holy Spirit is also given to us in Scripture type as, as water flowing. Rivers of water shall flow out of our, our, our hearts, I would say. Um, speaking of the Holy Spirit. And so let's uh, think about it from the analogy of a water pipe. If a, a water pipe is completely clear of all blockages, when the tap is turned on, the water will flow freely through that uh, tap. There won't be, it'll just come out in full, full force. It, well, it can come out, depending on the measure of it, it'll come out in whatever, uh, there's no blockages there. In, it will full force in, not going to hinder it. But if there are blockages within that water pipe, well then, even though the tap is opened, the water is not going to flow freely through that, that pipe because there's blockages there. And so it will come out in, like, in, in, in a very small trickle. And so our lives kind of can be like that, in that because we are not walking as we should, when the Holy Spirit does want to make Himself manifest through us through His giftings, the power that is available through those giftings cannot be made manifest to the degree that the Holy Spirit would like it to be made manifest because there's blockages in the way. And so that's another way that we can neglect the gift that is within us in that we can hinder the gift of God that is within us. And so let's go back to Peter as the example. 
And we can pick it up in Acts chapter 5, 15. I did mention it earlier. Scripture says, So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. And they were all healed, obviously, um, as the, Peter's shadow fell on them. But that gives you an indication of the degree of power that was being made manifest through Peter's ministry at that time. We just obviously concentrate on Peter as the example. That even his shadow was healing people as he just walked past them. A tremendous degree of power was being made manifest through Peter. But later in Peter's ministry, we don't see that. That anointing lifts off of Peter. Now, he still is anointed by God. We still see him raising Talita from the dead. We still see him... Um, oh, it wasn't Talita, it was Dorcas. Sorry, he raised Dorcas from the dead. Um, we still see him doing miraculous... Um, being used in the gifts of the Spirit by God later in his ministry. But we do not see Peter being used to that degree again in the book of Acts where he just walked past people and his shadow was healing people. That doesn't happen again later in the book of Acts. Um, now, what had changed? Well, the, the gift of the, the Holy Spirit hadn't changed. It was the same Holy Spirit residing on the inside of Peter when his shadow was causing people to be healed and that was residing inside of Peter when Paul had to rebuke him. You recall there was an incident uh, in the church at Antioch where Peter had kind of got sidetracked with being Jewish again and Paul had to rebuke him in front of everybody that Peter you have a line you need to uh, repent basically and that's what he did um, and so that degree of anointing is not on Peter's life at that time as what it was earlier so we try to work out what had changed it's the same Holy Spirit that was residing within Peter it's the same Peter Peter the Apostle and Peter the Apostle no difference there um, it's the same gift gifts of healings because once Peter had received the gift of healings early on in his ministry that gift stayed with him all through his ministry so he still had the same gift he had the same so it's the same Peter same Holy Spirit same gift but we don't see that same level of power displayed through that gift that we did earlier on in the book of Acts now what changed well what changed was the the level of anointing on Peter's life had decreased because when Peter was walking so in, in at the time when his shadow was healing people there was such a degree of anointing upon Peter's life that that the, that level of power was made manifest through Peter now what caused that level of power to be made manifest through Peter earlier on well there's a, there were a number of influences uh, one of them was that the, the apostles gave themselves completely to prayer and to the ministry of the Word of God. They were completely devoted to prayer and to the ministry of the Word of God. So much so that they said, guys, we can't wait on tables. You have to choose other people to do this because we're going to focus on prayer and the Word of God. So they were completely set apart for that because that's what they meant to be set apart for. Ministry gifts are meant to give themselves to that. But there was something else there as well in that there was complete unity in the body of Christ at that time. And so because there was complete unity, there was nothing that could hinder the power of God from flowing. And so in that environment, Peter was able to operate in a far greater degree of anointing, to the degree that even when his shadow touched people, they were healed. Now we get over to when Peter, he starts to walk in hypocrisy on this, ish, on this particular issue. Paul calls it hypocrisy. Um, and Paul has to rebuke him. Now... Paul, uh, Peter's not walking in that degree of anointing anymore because there's certain issues that have arisen in Peter's life. Now, obviously, Peter gets his act again and he, get, he gets back on track. But I'm, I'm trying to equate the two different occasions. And so I, I don't know what Peter's lifestyle was like as he went for the rest of his, his ministry. But we do know this, that that degree of anointing wasn't displayed through Peter again. And we're trying to understand the reason why. And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, the, the reason I'm putting it down to is because it is up to the individual to not cause blockages in the pipe. And so the way that we conduct our lives as believers, because we're meant to walk in holiness, we're meant to walk in love, we're meant to walk in faith, we're meant to, 
give ourselves to prayer and to fasting and to spending time in the Word of God. Now, the individual who does that can expect um, and should expect a greater degree of anointing to be made manifest through them because there's no blockages there. But the individual who doesn't give themselves to too much prayer and no fasting and very little time in the Word of God and gets into strife here and there with other uh, believers, well, they'll still have the gift on the inside of them, but there won't be that degree of power being displayed through them because of the blockages in the pipe. And so that's one of the ways that we can affect the stewardship of the ministry gift that we've received. I'm talking about the spiritual gift that we've received from Holy Spirit. And so there is a responsibility placed upon the believer that when we do receive a spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit, we're, we're to be good stewards of that gift. In that we're not to neglect it, we, know, we, we must use it. And we must use it when the Holy Spirit prompts us to use it. We mustn't say, well, the Holy Spirit used somebody else today. I'm not really in the mood. Not at all. We must be fully available to Him to be used of Him whenever He chooses. And then, as I say, leading up to that, we must have our, 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 our lives in order and not allow blockages so that the Holy Spirit can't allow the full anointing to flow through us because we've been doing things or have neglected to do things that caused us to operate more freely in the Spirit. And that's as far as we want to get today on how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Um, we're going to close off the teaching in, in the next teaching on this series of Gifts of the Holy Spirit, but uh, for now we're not going to go any further. So we're going to close off today on that point. Amen.